thankful to, to the group, all those that helped out during this week of having them here. It's been a blessing. There's a huggiest bunch of kids, and we, ha we had fun taking them to Rotary Park. They took them out on the boats. We had a big fun day fiesta at our house last night. Just a, a really neat time with them. We're going to miss them. Um, and I want to thank our, our church here. The, to bring in the Ugandan Kids Choir, the, the usual thing is they have a love on, offering at this, some point during their presentation. And a lot of times they'll do an hour, but uh, we don't do that here. We never have. And pass an offering plate. And so they were uh, very accommodating in that. But I will let you know that through your giving here is I just average church size and what they usually receive, we were able to do uh, above that in an honorarium and travel expenses and everything else. And also, by not passing a plate, figure it, pa it opens you up to those that maybe are feeling called to sponsor a child. And I know a lot of times, because the way finances go in churches and everything, I know a little bit about it after 20 years, that when you have a missionary focus sometimes, that it tends to drop uh, general giving and all kinds of stuff like that. And you know what? I've never cared. And the Lord has given... Uh, us uh, faith and, and all of that and so you'll hear sometimes missionaries and they'll, they'll want it to be said well don't let it detract from your regular giving um, I say that's okay <laughs> it, it's great to sponsor a kid if it's going to mean that you couldn't give you can't give 40 more and you can do towards a kid and take from here well then do that God will always provide God will always provide and if God's putting that on your heart. And when she said they, they usually go for, for uh, nine, when she told me that, that they like to see, I know we'll have way above that. I, I, I'm so glad at the, the giving, mature, understanding hearts of our church that uh, I think we've already probably at that after first service. Um, with what Our church is going to do three. So if you just give here and you can't give enough, that, that our, our church is going to do three. Uh, we're just taking them on in faith, three more Three more kids, all the stuff we do. And, uh, and I usually don't ever say something like this, but I, wanna, I do want to say I think I love child sponsorship. Lisa and I already sponsor, but we're, we're going to sponsor another one too. And uh, so I'm really encouraging you. This is the area that I'm in, in raising money for building. I'm not good. That's why it's taken 20 years to get this far. <laughs> but I think I, you hear my heart in this. So... We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 5. So this might take me a minute too. Um, the, the passage of scripture we're going to be looking at after we looked at last week, uh, husbands, I mean wives submit to your husbands. So those beautiful verses that uh, I love to have ingrained on every person's heart, we'll, uh, we'll review them for about most of the message. And then we'll talk about how husbands are supposed to act. <laughs> And I think that'll be, that'll be good for everybody. Uh, no, we're going to pick it right up in verse 25, where it says this. It says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. So um, the message title is Loving Like Our Lord. If you have, don't have a Bible, pick one up from underneath the chairs. And I think it's about page 1150 or something like that. So here it is, this verse, verse 25. Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify, verse 26, and wash and cleanse her with the water uh, of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love your own wives as your own bodies, he who loves his wife loves himself. And then we'll see a third time where we're instructed as guys to love our wives. And I also forgot to mention earlier, I do want to mention, I know there's at least 13 that are looking online. And you can go to child care uh, or look up Ugandan Kids Choir if you want to sponsor online as well. And uh, I already got one feedback, and it was from our daughter who's at work. And she says, oh, those kids are so cute. And she was with us last night uh, and saw some of the ones that were staying at our house. Anyways. So there's a command, an instruction, an imperative given to us now, guys, after we've went through 
the, the wife's part. The husband part is longer. And even as they're called to submit, you'll see in here we're called to die. So I don't think they have it any rougher than us. <laughs> in their submission, remember they were told to submit is unto the Lord. I picked these guys up as a visual. And this lady submitted a little too much. It's not a relationship goal. To what happened was her husband got pulled over, got in trouble because he didn't take care of some DUI stuff, and he had a warrant. And, and then they put him into the back seat. The cop got uh, busy talking with somebody else that was driving by. It was in Alaska and everything. So the cop's talking to somebody else. She's in that car they were originally in as a passenger. Instead of getting in their car and driving away, she got in the cop car and drove away. They caught her a day later. But, uh, no, that's not, uh, that's not what we're looking for in love or submission. Now, in love, the culture says a lot of things to us about loving, too, doesn't it? It says how we're supposed to love. There's advertisement. Oh, if you really love, you're going to get them a diamond this big and everything else. Um, no, that's not the love that we're looking for. In fact, we love the fact that it tells us here how to love. Because we need instruction how to love. The world will tell us one thing that looks like love and one thing that is love. And I hope all this translates because it is going to be a, one of those primary teachings as we go through the Bible. I'm not targeting, but it's for husbands and wives here these two weeks. And then it's going to be for parents the, the next week kind of. But hopefully it translates into our other relationships. But in this, this culture, I mean, you know the Beatles song, Love, Love Me Do, I'll Always Love You. And then two stanzas down, it says, Someone to love, somebody new. <laughs> Wait a minute. I see a problem here. If you're always being true and forever loving, then somebody new you throw into the song. So this love, the Bible talks in the Greek language is full, right? So it, it says agapeo or agape love, which is one kind of love, and it's a lot of times described as God's love for us. We have the eros love that the Greek language is familiar with. Not eros love. We get the word erotic from it. It's a physical love. It's a romantic love. It's an intimate love. And then we have phileo, which is like the city of Philadelphia, which speaks of brotherly love. And if you've ever been to Philadelphia, that's called a wrong name city, most likely, because it's just not. Um, so you have this phileo love, which has been described as a reciprocal love, and it's because of love. I love you because we both like fishing. We, we both like to talk, and we like to hang out. And, you know, we got a lot in common, and you help me out, and I help you out, and we're, we're kind of a, it's kind of a because of love. I love you because of all of these reasons. You got a good personality and everything else. The Eros love speaks of that, that romantic love, and that's, a, that's kind of an if love. It kind of wears out sometimes. I love you if, um, if it's all, if a marriage is based on the foundation of Eros love, and uh, you want it to do just like the vows say, Till death do you part, and by God's grace, old age and everything else. And you say it's an eros love. I love you if you stay looking the same, honey. That don't happen for 50 years. There's this little thing called gravity, first of all. <laughs> and so things change a lot, right? You, you can't, and even our personalities can change. And old age and sickness and all these things can change. But So you have the if love, I love you if real conditional you have the the phileo real reciprocal or the because of love but you have this great love that's spoken of here of the agapeo love which it speaks of i love you anyway i love you through thick and thin i love you no matter what i love you unconditionally and that's god's love for us and so when it speaks here of husbands loving our wives just as christ loved the church it speaks of unconditional in the first part of that verse 25 and it's and as we, we speak of unconditional love and uh, just loving our wives, I want to look at Jesus and how he loved the disciples because it parallels between Christ and the church. And he loved the, the apostles. Amen? Amen? Do you ever wonder how he put up with them so long? <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things you see about Christ and loving the apostles was like in Mark 8, 26, where he says to them, why are you so fearful? He asked them that question. Oh, you of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And I think husbands, as we're going to live like that, we're going to be faith builders in our wives' lives. We're going to, first of all, you notice they were on that storm. They were uh, worried they were going to perish, and they're crying out to the Lord. First of all, Jesus listened to their cries. 
Husbands, we need to listen to our hearts, our wives' cries. We, uh, he was asleep when that happened. Now that has a parallel, doesn't it? I'm sleeping. I can't hear you. You need me right now? I'm asleep. Don't you know? He got up. Guys, there's a parallel. Sometimes we need to get up to serve our wives, <laughs> to help our wives. Can't stay lazy boy. And then you notice he was there. He practiced the ministry of presence with those apostles of his. He was there for them. He asked so many people if one of the things that speaks greatly to them or one of the things that spoke in a negative way is that, well, they weren't there for me when I needed them. He was there for them when needed. And then he speaks calm into the situation. I'm speaking in some generalities, but I think generally speaking, women are more emotional than men. I know that's the kind of situation I'm in. And I know it's a situation with my daughters and our, and our sons, right? Women tend to be, can we speak calm? We're, it's kind of our role and our call is to speak calm into the situation, I think, so often. And we, uh, we don't want to be those, ah! When she's all, ah, ah, ah! It just, it goes good, doesn't it? When it just escalates like that? No. We're like, okay, now. And then being a, a, a faith builder, saying, you know what? Come on, the Lord's still on the throne, right? He, he, still, he still works things for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Come on, let's, let, let's trust him here. We're expecting him to raise us from the dead. I think he can handle the water bill. And so we, we have that kind of faith building that Jesus did. You know what else about Jesus as he dealt with the apostles? He was a gentle corrector. They, they came and... Uh, they were in the flesh. They were wrong. They were flat out. James and John were wrong as wrong can be. And sometimes, I don't want to be stoned, but sometimes you wives are wrong. That's all there is to it. You're wrong. You're flat out. You're people. You're sinners. You're wrong. And that means the husband's going to be right. Now, that's always dangerous if the husband's not moving in the spirit. And so they were wrong. And Jesus gently corrected him. But he said to them, you don't know what you want. You don't know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Are you baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with? And he talks to him further that. He just keeps kind of going with this whole thing. He doesn't say, that's it. I can't believe you guys are arguing over who's going to get the left and the right seat. It's not even mine to give. I can't even believe that. You're just going to find out. And you know what? You're going to go through some hard stuff anyways. And I'm glad of it because you guys never left. <laughs> I mean, Jesus isn't flying off the handle. Right? Do you see Jesus flying off the handle at the apostles? And if there's some guys that deserved it in a worldly way, it was probably them guys, right? He doesn't do that. He was a gentle corrector. No, this is the way. And you know what? He was a patient communicator. In that, he would answer. He would, he would um, talk to them about things. Remember, he, he says, oh, you know, look out for the, beware of the bread. And, the, he goes, and they're like, oh, man, spiritual people make sure they always have enough bread. We forgot to stop at the hostess store. They, they, they were like out in left field. And he goes, no, I'm talking about leaven, because remember leaven puffs up and everything. He goes, no, I'm talking to you about the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. He took time to explain things, and it was very beneficial. He, he wasn't all, really, you're not following? You know, and I'm going to use a kind of a, because this gets very personal, right, as husbands and wives, and we're involved with so many in our fellowship as a, as a team and as a couple, and Lisa and I are together all the time, and especially now that I need her as my taxi, and uh, <laughs> when Caleb's not doing it, and uh this whole uh, thing of something I enjoy called football. And then it was kind of a, with the guys or a separate activity sometimes. And I can remember when she first started asking me football questions. And I was kind of like, oh, this is going to take some time. <laughs> uh, I mean, because if you're one of those football guys, you know that you feel at, at different times that, you sh could easily replace any commentator that's there. 
and some of them more than others because you already know what's going to happen before they even say it on the mic and then you show you do it with your buddies and you say those words and what the guy's going to say and then you go see i knew it before he could say it why ain't i hired on abc nbc or something and so well we know you know the the flags before the the referee makes the official decision oh, that's going to be offside that's going to be oh that's pass interference and we're, we're even second guessing the the playbacks on the calls so it was it took some time to have her where we could both enjoy and participate and now it's really so fun to have her because um, she picks the right teams to root for <laughs> she's a cardinals fan and uh, she loves Larry Fitzgerald now, and every, it's, it's all good, you know. <laughs> but it takes some patience, and it takes some time, and, and everything else. It's not like, gosh, how do you not know that it's not a home run? Seriously. <laughs> you know. And so just, that's just like, well, there's so many examples you can go into in your own lives, I hope. See, because Jesus, uh, another thing about him, he was a ready encourager. And... Guys, we have that coach mentality sometimes. It's like, yeah, I want to give them a little attaboy, but I don't want to give them too much. Because then I think they'll slack off a little. And they'll never be what they could be. Like a job uh, performance evaluator. Like, okay, you got some good marks here, but I don't want to miss these bad marks. Yeah, dinner was okay. Nobody died, got sick. <laughs> but I'm telling you, if you studied more Wolfgang Puck, you would probably take it up a notch, baby. So he was a great encourager. Didn't he? I mean, Peter, how much he messed up. But even he told Peter, hey, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But you got something from the heavens. But God has revealed this to you. Go, so that's an important thing. And now they end at verse 25, and you're going, we have gone through a half a verse. Oh, Lord, help us. He also loved the church who gave himself for her. It'll go faster. But even as uh, this one here, Jesus is sacrificial. Sacrificial. Unconditional. That means he gives up. Now, greater love, we know John 15, 13, has no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. And I think us that are married or those intending to get married, and us guys could say, you know what? I would lay down my life for my wife. If there's a gangster or something, I need to step in front of a bullet, a robbery, or if there's a car coming, um, I get out of the way. We, we have a friend just recently, you might have heard it on the news, that he's, he's close friends with uh, some of our close friends in Tucson, the, the boy that just got uh, killed by the railroad, on the railroad. Um, and he was with his girlfriend. They were on the railroad, and they couldn't get off in time. It has a long bridge. They couldn't see it coming. It was in Tucson just like two months ago. We went and saw our friend. He had, he had the date tattooed on him. And as horrible and as a tragedy as it is, the guy went out like a hero because the girl, he shoved her out of the way just in time. And uh, the train got him fully, and he, the girl had some injuries. But we can say that, and we like to be the hero guys and everything else, but it, it is really laying down our lives daily that's so important, incrementally sacrificially it tells us we have a role of headship we can get a final say we can lead and direct but when's the last time guys if i could say that you sacrificed for your wife i'm talking you went into hobby lobby and we're glad about it <laughs> i'm saying you watched the chick flick and didn't just have your own fun by destroying it all the way through <laughs> sacrificially uh, i mean this guy's doing it right you know what i mean it's like, somebody's going to get their feet wet, let my feet get wet. I'm glad for my father who raised me with old moral World War II vet. They say, you know what, if somebody goes hungry, it's the man. If somebody's got to drive a junker car, it's the man. If somebody's going to be cold or go without, it's the man. And that's how the Lord loves us, very sacrificially. And it's going to hurt sometimes, guys. Don't expect it not to hurt. Love hurts, love scars, it wounds, it mars. Bah, no. <laughs> Just feel it. It hurts sometimes. Come on. It does. It's gonna have to you have to give up. It's not gonna be your first choice. But that's sacrificial. You know, David said to Aruna, No, but I will surely buy it from you for a price. 
For I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord God, that which costs me nothing. It's going to cost us something sometimes. Don't be surprised that it costs something. And there's an objective here that he might present here, verse 27. Well, excuse me, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So there should be a sanctifying work that goes on. And another thing is the work goes on in a marriage. I like this fact. Marriage may be made in heaven, but the maintenance charges must be paid on earth. <laughs> And right, there's maintenance. There, dating shouldn't stop in those kind of activities. And also leading spiritually, most importantly. And so there's times where the man will need to say, nope, I don't think that's right for the kids, and so they're not going to go there. I No, you know what, that on the TV, it's, come on, it's trash. Let, let's turn it. And it, it's reciprocal, of course. Lisa's got it easier. Me as a guy, and in some ways I think, me as a guy, I, t I tend to want to give a three-point outline, instruction, er, this is why, this is why we don't, everything like that. I, can you imagine me being wordy? But <laughs> Lisa, I mean, really, if I'm listening to the Holy Spirit, remember this is a spirit-led marriage, if, and the Spirit's moving in the midst, you know what, Lisa has to, all tons of words she has to say to me when I know I'm kind of getting out of line in attitude or activity, she just says, Ray... That's it. Or, honey. <laughs> I go, oh, that, I hear that, honey. And it's really serious. There's the word uh, now in front of it. Now, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that speaks volumes. I go, okay, what I'm doing, what I'm saying, how I'm acting, what I'm thinking, some kind of attitude. That is just not from the Lord. She knows it. And now she's just helped put a spiritual antenna up a little bit that I know it. And I uh, straighten out, hopefully. See, and, and it takes diligence and working together. The Lord's working on us, didn't give up on us. Um, there should be no reluctance in our diligence. We should be looking at the positive too whenever possible. You are all fair, my love, and there is no spot in you. Just not doing the whole coach evaluator thing, but even looking for the good in our Christian wives. So how, and you're saying now, wow, this is a lot, Ray. This is... Uh, I'm doing all the working here. I'm doing all the heavy lifting. Well, that's what guys were called to do. But look at it. It says, it's not impossible. Look at verse 28. You already do it for someone, guys. We already care for someone like this. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. Oh, we care for us like this. That's who we care for already. And now, now we've gotten to a, a situation where we're, we're yoked. And whenever you yoke with anything, it takes some adjustments to keep pushing forward, and there can be some chafing or whatever. But Because we are good. It says, he who loves his wife loves himself. Happy wife, happy life. It's been said. But the reality is that love their own bodies. I care for myself. I do. In so many ways. There's a little pain that's caused, guys with mustaches know this, when the hair gets too long. And you eat, it'll grab a little whisker sometimes, or it'll be just like gross, the hair in your... And, and you just, so I, I have this little thing that's paid for by me. I didn't mind spending the money. I didn't go, well, should I or shouldn't I? Is that really needed? I just got one of those little tiny $15 razors that go, vroom, 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 and I maintain myself there. I don't go, stupid mustache. You know how much trouble you caused me growing unruly like that. Right? I, I, just, I just take care of myself. I love my own body. It's no issue. We need to care for our wives that kind of way and care for others. Um, we've got to admit it. We're, we are selfish. We think about self. We do for ourselves. And now it says we've called us to do for someone else. And it's not that, um, and to deal with someone else and to think about someone else and to care about someone else when they're absent and to love someone else. It doesn't tell the wives much about loving the husbands. It's just about submitting and respecting. But they already have a, a bigger capacity for love, I think. Sometimes guys think, you know, oh, my dog, man, I had it so good. It was just me and my dog. My dog loved me. The dog just, man, loved me. I'd go to work. I'd go out with the guys. I'd do whatever I did, put my dog in the kennel, go out, come back five hours later, open up the kennel, 
Man, that dog's just great. Happy to see me. I tried that once with Lisa. She was not stoked. No, of course not. Just a joke. But some guys, guys, you know. Joke, joke. But some guys, guys, you know, we just, oh, come on. We're so selfish. It says, even with dealing with everyone, let each one of you not only look out for your own interests, but also the interests of others. Because no one, verse 29, ever hated his own flesh, but he nourishes it and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. So that's what we're supposed to do, nourish. That means to feed, emotionally feed. I've been, because I know this message was coming up and I've been studying for this, and so I'll, I get convicted because not being all that it's, you know, the Lord would have me be. And so I amp it up. I've got to be honest. I amp it up. I've been amping up I love you this week like crazy. Um, I even asked her last night. I said, if I'm saying I love you too much, and uh, she goes, no. I would have thought, maybe, yeah, there's no such thing, apparently. We can be like Elf. I love you, I love you, and I don't care who knows. Um, <laughs> and they'll just, they, they want to hear it. The, the guy who thinks, well, I told her I loved her when I married her, and if anything changes, I'll let her know. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> you got to nourish them, cherish them. They're precious. And... We will be blessed if we do that. And so it goes on and it says, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And that, in the Hebrew, because it's quoting from Genesis 2.24, the, the Hebrew there is literally can be translated weld. It's a welding together. It's not going anywhere. It is staying together. And they have... Um, they should have a great reassurance that this is till death does us part. If we're walking in, in the spirit and it's a Christian marriage, that's what it's going to look like. It's going to be, they're going to be very secure. Didn't Jesus make us and his disciples very secure? He says, I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. Oh, I'm going to be with you till the very end of the age. Oh, I'm the good shepherd. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, me and my father, we're one and we're going to keep you in our hands and no one's going to be able to snatch you out. I don't think they had this insecurity or anything like that with Jesus. That, oh, walking on thin ice, walking on eggshells, anything like that. No, Lisa says this more than I do. It's one of her things when we we're premarital or talking with people, uh, marital discussion. Says, there's no I in team. And I also say there's no, there's no victory in quitting. It's, it's to the end. That, um, and if you're struggling, if there's some stuff going on in your marriage, Today, guys, remember from where you have fallen. Remember how good it was when you first were together. Repent. Do the first works. When's the last time you, you showed her love? You got her flowers? You, you sent her something sweet in a text or something? Or else I will come to you and quickly remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. And I don't think I'm stretching to run parallels between Christ and the church because it's pretty clear here. And you say, man, that, that, that lampstand that's supposed to be a light that shows the world the representation of Christ in the church and everything else, that, that's supposed to be sanctifying. That word back there where it says to sanctify him by the word, and Jesus said in John 17 to sanctify him by the word for the word's truth, it, all, it speaks of the rhema word. It speaks of living out the word, speaking the word, knowing the word in our heart and sharing the word. And it says, go and do the first works. You don't stop dating because you don't stop romancing. You don't stop... Uh, being patient. The, all those things you can do that you first do to win <coughs> your lady's heart. Don't, don't let them be neglected. Um, the, the wanting to hear them. Wanting to hear what's on their mind. Wanting to hear what they think. Wanting to, to hear their ideas. All of that stuff. Aren't you glad Jesus hears us out? Aren't you glad he's interested in us? So there you, you have that. So he says, this is a great mystery, verse 32, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. And he says, nevertheless, let each, each of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. You know, the problem sometimes when you have people in and they're, they're really struggling is you tell them these two basic principles. I, I, I have the DVDs. I've given out literally now hundreds 
over the years of love and respect and those two basic principles. And if they're both Christians, there should not be a problem. If they're both coming as, as Christians, they, they, they think it's all a communication problem, an intimacy problem, a money problem, a misunderstanding problem. So often, What it is, is so often, I mean, ultimately, it's a lordship problem. To take these things to heart and apply them on a regular, daily basis, empowered by the Spirit of God as you, you plead for that power. And so they, oftentimes you, you can see it, or you'll experience in subsequent meetings together, and it's like, well, I'm going to start loving her, and she starts respecting me like she should, and submitting. And then he's like, well, I'm going to start, she, she'll be, well, when he starts loving me, I'll start respecting like I should. And it's a fear of going first sometimes. But you know what? Perfect love casts out fear. If we're trusting the Lord in this, we're going to trust him with our hearts. We're going to trust him and be vulnerable. People are afraid to be vulnerable sometimes. And it's, it's important that we, uh, we say, okay, I'm submitting to your lordship. I believe the word of God is true, right? We believe the word of God is true. And so we take these principles. And, I can, and she's in this service. I mean, I can say, our marriage is nothing like it used to be. It's not what we want it to be. Yet, but at least it's coming along. Believe me. No, I just got <laughs> one last one little joke, just kind of cheering it up a little. <laughs> I mean, she puts up with me daily. This isn't just here and now. I mean, this is every day she deals with it. But so, man, the difference the Lord has made is incredible. I can say we're we're now going on twenty years. Where we haven't went to bed mad at each other. Twenty years because of Jesus. And uh, we haven't fought over money. Some things that people fight over. And that's be all because of Jesus. So for conclusion, stand or the spout where blessings are poured out. God wants your marriage to be a messy those, uh, message. Blessing. God wants your marriage to be a blessing. In so many ways. We've had so many stressors in the last season of our life, few years. I mean, from our kids moving to death to illnesses and surgeries, both of us in the last year, to financial stuff, all kinds of stuff. Our stress level, if you looked at the world and they said, this is what will do this and that to me, it's done nothing but draw us closer to the Lord and closer to each other. Amen, Lisa? One time, say it where people can hear it, you sweet... <laughs> See? <laughs> See what I'm talking about. She's the sweet, gentle, quiet, but she even spoke up when I asked her. Treasure your marriage. For where your treasure is, there's your heart also. Treasure the Lord's work in your life and treasure your spouse. And, uh, you know, I could go into, well, if they, if they, what if they're not saved? And it says, who knows, they might be won over. And there's all kinds of different things that we have there. We had a, a guy come up after first service, and his wife right now has, has shingles. And uh, they drive all the way from, from uh, Parker area. To, this is their fellowship. But he said, oh, I wish she would have been here. And he goes, she was recently, because of her health issues, like kind of wondering. And it's a good, good Christian guy, Dan. And he goes, you know what? And she started kind of doubting this, because it's been a sacrifice. It's been a struggle. He said, I just repeated our marriage vows to her. And what that did to her heart is, is amazing. And I know, I know my brother right here has been dealing with some of the same kind of stuff with health. And uh, let's represent Christ and be blessed, right? And if you're, if you're not married yet, uh, gals, you know what the guy's supposed to look like. So don't settle for less. And... Uh, Every, gal, every guy's got a jerk gene, but you don't need it to be overwhelming. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're predisposed towards jerk gene. <laughs> Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for this portion of Scripture. Thank you for our visitors. God, thank you that uh, we've been so blessed, but not to hoard to ourselves, but that we might be... Uh, avenues of blessing. So thank you for your grace. Thank you for our church family. In Jesus' name, all God's people say it. Amen. Amen.